please uh, break this vector into components. I hope you notice that we're sticking with these same positive directions over here. For every problem, you have to see what the positive directions are. On many problems, you would choose your own positive directions, but on these problems, I'm telling you what the positive directions are. First thing we have to do is draw that right triangle. Uh, we need to draw a right triangle that uh, uses the overall vector as the hypotenuse, and the legs have to be uh, parallel to the axes, and it would be nice if we could include the angle that we would get. Now we have to put in our arrows. Well, our overall vector was pointing down and to the left. So the legs are pointing down and to the left. We should always label the legs. The x component is parallel to the x-axis, and the y component is parallel to the y-axis. Here's the side we were given. Here's the angle we were focusing on. Here's the hypotenuse and the adjacent side and the opposite side. Okay, well to figure out the adjacent side, we know we take the hypotenuse and should we then multiply that by the cosine or the sine? Well, cut. The adjacent side comes from the cosine. Cosine here of 30 degrees. Now the adjacent side here is f sub x. I hope you put a dot in to show that that's just a length or a magnitude. And then the hypotenuse here was 8. On our calculator, 8 times the cosine of 30 is 6.9. say the answer was 6.9, because after, after we figure out the magnitude, uh, we have to figure out the sine component. Uh, now I'm going to then indicate this symbol without a dot. I know the magnitude is 6.9, and then the sine comes from thinking about our positive directions. Well, let's see. It looks like the x component is to the left, but the positive direction is to the right. So the x component is anti-parallel um, to the x-axis, which would make this a negative number. Always a good idea to build what you figured out into your sketch. Now we still need to figure out the opposite side using what we know about the hypotenuse. Since it's the opposite side, so we should be using the sine. And the angle we're focusing on is 30. By the way, of course, this angle is 60. This angle is 60. If you wanted to, you could use the 60 degree angle to break things into components. Since we know this angle is 60, if you wanted to, you could have solved this whole problem using the 60 degree angle. It's just that that's not the way these problems are conventionally done. Usually you're going to use the angle that you were given, not an angle that you have to figure out. So we'll stick with that conventional approach. Now we need a label for the length of the opposite side. Well, uh, that's f sub y. But again, I hope you put a dot in to show that that's just the length or magnitude. The hypotenuse was 8. The sine was 30. We're still talking about the variable with a dot. 8 times the sine of 30 is exactly 4. Now that's not the right answer. Now we have to write down the variable without a dot and figure out what its sign is going to be. Well, let's see. The, uh, the, the y-axis is pointing up, but uh, the y-component is pointing down, anti-parallel to the positive y-axis. So this would come out negative. Negative 4.
Remember that your goal here is not just to get these questions right, but to be building a reliable notation that will help you on harder problems. So I hope that you're not being uh, satisfied if you're just getting this right, but you're trying to learn uh, this notation of when we're focusing on lengths and magnitudes, we use the component with a dot. But when we're trying to focus just on the overall signed component, we uh, write down the component, uh, we write down the variable without a dot. That is a notation that's going to be uh, helpful to you if you master it now. Um, but it's only going to be helpful if you get quite comfortable with it. So this is a good time to be getting comfortable with that notation. Uh, remember again, there's no point putting a sign on the overall vector. Overall vectors never have signs because they're not parallel to the x or the y axes or anti-parallel to the x or y axes. And remember that um, I'm a little bit ambivalent about whether you should put a dot on the overall vector here. Um, you don't really need two different symbols for the overall vector. We need two different symbols for the x component because we need one symbol for the magnitude and one symbol for the sine component. But you only need one symbol for the overall vector because there is no sine version, just the magnitude. Um, so I think you can do it either way that you, uh, any way that you like, with a dot or without a dot. If you really wanted to emphasize that you were focusing on the magnitude, you might put the dot in. But I don't think it's necessary to put the dot in here uh, because there is no such thing as the sine overall vector.